In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to import a flat relief model and unwrap it onto a column. We'll walk you through the process of importing in that flat 3D model into a rotary session, and then we'll show you how to toolpath it so you can create the part that you can see here on the screen. But to do that, we're actually going to come up to File and Close so we can create a new file from scratch. So let's create a new file. So let's go up to create a rotary job. We're going to have a length of 12 inches down to 4 inches, units are in inches. Uh, Z0 position off the cylinder axis. That's because I'm not sure if my material is even all the way around, so the cylinder axis will give you some more accuracy for the cut. Uh, XY datum in the bottom left-hand position. The orientation for my particular setup is along x-axis, uh, so that means I'm wrapping the y-axis. For your setup, do double-check the orientation that your machine cuts in for uh, your rotary setup. And then for my modeling resolution, I've gone for very high because we're going to be using a model in this particular scenario. Let's click OK. Now we're going to be using a 3D model which has a lot of utilization because you can bring in a 3D model for a rotary job to uh, create a table leg, for example, or you can create a column. So it has quite a lot of utilization. But let's look at our views first. Let's title our views, and you can see over here in the 3D view, if I turn on my material block here, and we come down to the, the top of this, this is our cylinder in the 3D view, and I can right mouse click and drag to show it. On the bottom left of the software, we've got the width, which is 12 inches, which is the width of our cylinder. The height here is 12.5664. Now it's actually the circumference here of the wrapped Y, and the depth is two inches. So it's actually two inches from uh, the center here outside and the center here outside to here. So it'd be four inches in total. So that's the diameter there. Now let's have a look at bringing in our model, shall we? So let's go up to the option here for import a component or 3D model. I'm going to navigate to my tutorials folder. I'm going to choose this file here, which is a floor drop.stl file. Now it's important to note that this file was actually created in another piece of software. So that means when we bring it in, when we double click and bring it in, it's being brought in with the import form because it is not native to our software. So let's have a look at this in the full 3D view. So let's maximize our 3D view. Now, right now you can see it's set it to come in as a full 3D model. That's not actually quite what we want. You can see how it's orientated here. What we want is this, we want a flat uh, model because that is much more appropriate for what we're going to be doing in just a moment. Now the next section we have the initial orientation. Now if you keep an eye on the right hand side here of the view, watch what happens when I click right, front, bottom, left, and back. So you can orientate your model in these various options. But I'm going to go for top because that's how you want it to sit on uh, our job. And I'm going to rotate this uh, about 90 degrees because I want this to sit on the x-axis because we're cutting along the x-axis. So our ro rotary job setup is in the x-axis. We want it to sit on the axis, so that's how it's going to get there. So we don't need to worry about interactive model rotation for now, but we do need to have a look at scaling this model because I want to scale it up just a little bit, uh, and I'm going to make sure that it scales the Y and Z value when I scale the uh, X value, and that's by having this lock ratio button on. So that means when I change this value here to 9, the Z and the uh, y will also change and the reason I went for 9 in X is because our job is set up to cut along X and I want to make the most of that material. I want to make the most of my material block here and use up the most of the space on uh, our rotary block. So let's get that nice and big. 9 inches is about right and you can see the Z and the Y have been reflected uh, as that change as well because we had lock ratio on there as well. So actually I'm quite happy with that. It looks really good. So let's click OK. Okay, you can now see that we get this warning that it's going to suggest that we should uh, actually add in a modeling plane so that our model won't be distorted. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. But I'm also going to show you in a second what that would look like if we hadn't have done that. So let's just click yes for now. And let's have a look at what this now currently looks like. So you can see how we made the most of our X there. It looks pretty good so far. But like I said a minute ago, I wanted to show you what would happen if we didn't have a zero plane. So to do that, let's pop over to the toolpath menu. So let's orient this to the top, and then what we'll do is we'll switch over to the toolpath menu with this button here, and we're going to go to this option here to go set. Now in this menu you can see some job setup details, but what we're interested in at the moment is this section here, the model position in material. Now currently our model thickness is set to just over half an inch. I'm actually going to just change that to be 0.5, hit apply, and then close that down, so that's all set there. So you can see here there's this kind of beige or light brown color here, and that actually represents our model. And this inner bit here, this darker brown, is our cylinder. Now, you can see here that our model thickness and the plane here add up to two inches, which is half the diameter of the edge here, so of our cylinder. You can see that, as we pointed out earlier, from here to here. Now, watch what happens as I move the slider down for 
the model position material. You'll notice it starts to distort quite a bit. And if I move it even further down, it distorts further. If I move it all the way down, it distorts pretty badly. And this is what you would get if you didn't have that zero plane in or the modeling plane in. And so that's why it's really important that we have the modeling plane so we don't get something distorted like this. So let's push that all the way back up to the top. And then what we can do is we can cancel out of this form for the moment. And then what we can do is just reset the view. And now we can have a look at creating some coves for this because we want some coves to cut around the top and the bottom edges here. Uh, so let's start adding some of those in. So we can do that in the 3D view. If we just unwrap the view for the moment, if we click this button here to unwrap it, we'll go over to the design tab and we'll pin it just for the moment. And what we'll do is we'll go over to the polyline tool. And I'm just going to roughly go over to about 0.5 from X here. So around about there. And then what we'll do is left mouse click, come down here, let it snap to the bottom here. Perfect. Right mouse click to get out of this form. And now what I can do with this is while this is highlighted and selected, press Control, Shift, and H on the keyboard, and it will create a copy of it on the other side there for us. So you can see how easily we've just made our lines for our codes. So we're going to use these to now profile on and we can cut around to make a lovely effect for a rotary design. Now, speaking of cutting, let's have a look at the toolpath menu, shall we? So let's create some toolpaths. Let's go over to the toolpath menu. And first thing we do, we'll check our material setup. So we can see the diameter is four inches. The XY datum is bottom left. The Z0 is set off the center of the cylinder. The model position material, let's drag that all the way to the top. Double check our settings here. So 0.5 for the model thickness, 1.5 for the modeling plane adds up to uh, two inches. And then a rapid Z gap above material. These are all safe and sound for my particular machine setup. So do double check these for yours and make sure they are safe for your particular setup. I'm gonna change this one to 0.5 for my Z gap above material because that's what I need and click OK. Now we're going to look at three different toolpaths. We're going to have a 3D roughing toolpath, a 3D finishing toolpath, and finally a profile toolpath for our codes. Now the first one we're going to look at is the 3D roughing toolpath. So let's come to the 3D roughing toolpath, which is just here. I'm going to use the model boundary and we're going to use a quarter inch end mill. Now I'm quite happy with the settings for my quarter inch end mill at the moment, but if I did want to change these settings permanently, I would make an adjustment in this menu. If I wanted to change it just for this particular job, I could use this menu. So just to reiterate, if you want to make any changes to your settings for your tool, click the edit button specifically only for this job. So it'll only do it for this one particular toolpath. If you want to make any changes permanently to the tool, click this button here and you can change it and it'll be saved in your tool database permanently. But I'm happy with that setting, so I'll use that for now. Don't need the boundary offset. Machine allowance, I'm going to leave a little bit of material behind for my finishing toolpath to clean up. I'm going to use Z-level strategy. Don't need to worry about ramp plunge moves. I'm going to click calculate on this toolpath. Now, what you can see here is currently is the unwrapped toolpath. Now, if I wrap it back up again by using the automatic wrapping up here, we can now have a look at what this looks like as a toolpath here. You can see how it's cutting the cylinder. So let's have a look at the preview, shall we? So let's click on preview selected toolpath. And you can see here what it's doing is it's unwrapped the job first and it's run it as an unwrapped three axis job and then it's going to wrap it again. So you can see how it's roughing its way through. And the objective here, as is, it is a 3D roughing toolpath, is to remove the majority of the material and then leave a little bit of material behind for the finishing one to clear up. And you can start, start seeing the shape of the model there. So that's now finished up, and that's exactly how I expected it to look. I'm just going to turn off our material view for a moment there, and then you can see how that looks at present. So now let's look at creating a finishing toolpath. So let's close down the preview here. Let's go up to the 3D finishing toolpath. I'm going to use a ball nose here, so a ball, an eighth inch ball nose. Now again, if I wanted to change the settings for this particular job, I can do it by clicking Edit here, but I'm actually quite happy with these settings, so I'm going to keep them as is. Uh, in this case, the model boundary again, don't need a boundary offset, but this time I'm going to use a raster strategy, but I'm not going to change the angle. Now what it's going to do at zero degrees currently is it's going to uh, come over to the job, and the, when the cutter comes down, it's going to go along, go over by the step over distance in the tool, cut down here, go by step over distance, cut down, etc. So that's how it's going to rotate. So that the actual stock is going to rotate by the step over distance, cut, rotate, cut. Now if I change that to something like 90 degrees, for example, what would happen this time is when the cutter comes down, this would rotate so that it cuts all the way around, step over distance, cut all the way around, step over by that distance, cut all the way around. So that's what would happen with 90 degrees. And I don't want that in this case. I'm going to cut along X and I'm going to keep it in zero. 
and I'll click calculate so we can have a look at the toolpath. And there we are, so there's our calculated toolpath. Let's have a look at running the preview for it, see what it looks like as well. So again, you see it unwraps it as a three axis job, machines it and then wrap it again. But you can see how much detail we got out of that using that eighth inch ball nose. And that looks really lovely. So we've got our model there looking nice and ready to go. So let's look at the next set of toolpaths, shall we? Let's go and look at the profile. So let's just unwrap this for the moment. I'm just gonna close down the preview and we're gonna uh, have a look at our vectors. We can turn them on over here. So let's go over to our profile toolpath. Now this time let's select both of our vectors, hold shift, left mouse click and select both. Now our start depth is actually gonna be 0.5 because we machined away the top of the surface of the cylinder here to get down to our model. We machined away 0.5. Remember if you recall, that was the thickness of the model that we had in the set form. So we can use 0.5 here as a start depth. And I'm gonna go down by 0.25, so a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna use a quarter inch end mill here. You know what, actually, you know what? I'm actually not. I'm gonna use a ball nose. I'm gonna use a half inch ball nose. And I'm happy with these settings, but do double check these for yourself. But I think I'm, I'm gonna use a ball nose here for a better effect. I'm gonna cut on the line, so directly on the line itself. Don't need to worry about separate last pass or tabs or the ramping or anything like that. So I can just calculate and we can have a look at what these toolpaths look like. So let's just run these on the form here and then if we wrap our view you can see it's made these wonderful looking coves at the top and bottom end of our design here and these look really really nice it really adds to the design it really finishes it off quite nicely so at this stage what we can do is now save off our uh, toolpaths so we'll go to the save toolpaths menu over here and we're going to select all of our toolpaths that we want to save and we want to make sure that we've got the right setup here. So if we look at our machine here, I've got desktop, but I've also got this one here, desktop rotary along X. Now, the reason I have this machine set up is because I have a specific rotary setup and I needed a specific post processor for that setup. You can see that post processor there, the G code wrap Y2A post. That means it's going to take the Y moves in the G code and turn them into A moves because we're wrapping the Y axis, if you recall from our job setup. So if you're wrapping the X axis, your post would be the X to A post. So it's really important at this stage to check that you have the correct post processor for your particular setup. And if you wanna learn how to set up your machine and add post processors, you can look at the machine configuration guide, which is one of the related videos. But for now, what I can do is now save out these toolpaths. So I'll click on save toolpaths. And I can call this one floral because I know it's my floral cylinder design. Uh, I can also put in cylinder there if that makes it even clearer. I can click on save and now those are ready for me to take to the machine and cut these out. Similarly, I can also uh, save off the actual file so I can use this later on as well. So if we come to file and save as, I can save this one as uh, import and unwrap 3D model toolpaths and that way I know with toolpaths being the plural that I've got multiple toolpaths in this file but I can now use this to uh, open up later on or make some edits to if I want to make any changes to it later on but for now that brings us to the end of this tutorial but I hope you have found it useful and I highly recommend that you look at our other tutorials on how to use wrapped rotary machining and software I'm sure you'll find them very useful and we look forward to seeing you in the next video